Yes, yes, yes. Welcome back to another episode of In Focus with Drones Road Productions, where we guide you on all things video marketing for small and medium-sized businesses in Aotearoa, New Zealand. In the studio, you've got Ben, who's talking right now, and also Tasha. How are you going, Tash? Very well. How are you? Great. Great to be back on the pod. I know. Who thought we'd even get this far? Yeah, I know. I know. What are we talking about today? Today, we are going to be talking about storytelling, which is just my absolute favourite subject ever. Um, and is something that we do all the time. I can see you're beaming. Am I? Beaming. Yeah, you oh, love it. I love a good story. Love a good story. <laughs> okay, I guess we don't really need to touch on what storytelling is because everyone knows it's yeah. telling a story. Yeah, yeah. But why is it so important when it comes to video? Great question. And there's many ways I could um, I could answer that. But Skin the cat? I guess in essence, like if I'm keeping it simple, we are literally hardwired to remember stories, right? So... Back in the day, we'd be sitting around the campfire before there was any social media um, or television. Ah, the or good cinema. old days, eh? Yeah. Oh, I don't know if they were the good old days. Like, I, I don't know if I'd want to go and hunt for my food every day. No, no, you're probably right. Yeah. But um, they were simpler times. And so we would sit around the campfire with our family, with our friends, you know, in our neighbourhood, it wasn't even a neighbourhood, was it? But just in our areas, I suppose. Because they lived in communities. Yeah, communities. They, did, they were in communities. And we would tell stories, right? So... You know, the older members of the family would pass down all their wisdom and information through stories, right? And so we remember them. It's, it's as simple as that. So obviously when we're thinking, putting that back to video marketing or videos, we want our videos to be remembered, right? So yeah. first of all, storytelling is a, is a good way to, to be remembered. The other element is, is that it allows us to resonate with our audience, right? So if you have done the work up front, you know who your target audience are, you know who your demographic are. Well, you can craft a story that relates to them, right? Mm. That they're going to feel a connection to and feel an emotion to. And if I go back to my previous podcasts, we're all about trying to drive connection because connection is what ends up in sales. All right, that's four times you've already said connection. I think we might say it a few more times because it is such a crucial part of storytelling and resonance. Oh, I think that's the second time I said that word as well. Anyway. Keywords. Keywords, man. Our brain is actually stimulated differently when we connect emotionally as well. So it's another, back in the science corner, another one of those elements of video that makes it such a powerful tool to use uh, as a business. Yeah, 100%. And I think like, I go back to this all the time, right? And this is, and I'm not saying anything new here or revolutionary, but people buy people, right? Like people buy brands, not businesses, okay? And so if I'll stop you there. Yeah. And I'll say, People don't buy what you do. They buy why you do it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> <laughs> cool accent you've got going on there. Um, I think it's Norwegian or something. American, you know. Simon Sinek. Oh, yeah, your boy. But, well, exactly, right? And so we know that this isn't revolutionary stuff that I'm speaking. But, okay, if we know that people buy people or people buy brands, not businesses, okay, well, then we, we need to connect with them. So we need to drive this connection. How do we do that? Through storytelling. Um it allows, I guess storytelling allows a brand or a product or a service to be personified. Mm. You know, like it allows, again, it allows for a human element. That's Bring, what it adds personality does. to their business, yeah. so to speak. And you can still, you know, you can still um, tell stories and be educational. You can be informative. You can actually just tell stories to entertain. You know, there's, there's loads of ways you can use storytelling, you know, going back to your purpose. But... You know, I, I always say this all the time, right? Nike, amazing brand. Everyone knows who they are. Why are they so successful? Because they've built that brand, right? And mm. how have they done that? Through storytelling. Yeah. You know? You don't see a Nike ad and they're like, hello, this is our latest trainer. It costs $200. Go and buy it at JD Sports, right? No. They take you on a journey. They take you on this big emotional journey about standing for things and just doing it. And all of this, all of this element of storytelling surrounds their whole brand, right? Which is why you will go and buy a trainer from them for two hundred and twenty dollars that probably cost about fifteen bucks to make. Right? Two twenty sounds cheap as well. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if they are two twenty, but you get what I'm saying, right? And so, if you apply that to yeah, that's Nike, but you can apply that to any business. You can apply that same ethos or, or same idea to any business, um, bringing that story element, you know, all about, you know, driving that big C word, 
Connection. Connection, baby. Connection. Yeah, they um the advertising they do, especially their videos, uh they're amazing. They they they're the fucking they're like the benchmark, right? For everyone else. I mean say. they also have an unbelievable budget, which is why I know, I know. They are so incredible and they have the best minds working on their brand. But the principle's the same. The storytelling principle is the same. But people shy away from it, right? People go, We're gonna put some money into video, we you know, God, for this to work, we really need to drive sales. Um, and so people get really concerned with that. Like, okay, let's just um, put a TV, up, a TV ad up or let's just put a video out there that says that we've got four sofas and they're 30% off, okay? Because people go, right, then people go, oh, there's 30% off on sofas and that's great. Now, that's fine for a short period of time. Those sofas will probably go, right? What happens after those sofas are gone? And Get all to the make stocks, another one? Yeah. Well, what happens when you've sold the sofas and then you do another 15% of tables and you've so- sold the tables, but there's all this stock that still isn't going right. They're only coming to you because of your discount. They're not going to come back to you again, right? Yeah, you might have great customer service when they're in the store. All of these things help. But you need to be trying to build long-term brand equity, right? And long-term brand loyalty, Mm. And the way you do that is by storytelling, right? So in the short term, it might be way more of an investment to do it this way. Yeah, it's going to be way more. Well, I mean, it might not be, but more often than not, it's a, it's a bigger investment up front and it takes a longer time to get those results, but then you will sustain those long results. You know, they're sustainable. That's not these big high and low dips you see with companies when their sales massively spike. So again, going back to the art of storytelling. Like, okay, for example, right? Go. So what's that place that always has the sales? Briscoe's. Briscoe's. So if I show you a poster. Da, 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 da. Is that Briscoe's? No, that's... um. The New World Countdown. Anyway. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> anyway, one of them. Sorry, back to the Briscoe's sale. Back to Briscoe's. Actually, Briscoe's always Matariki have a sale. coming up. Must be a sale. That's a bad example because they always have a sale. Briscoe's always have a sale. Okay, Bunnings. Okay, so Bunnings. So Bunnings have a 20% sale, right? Awesome. Now, I could write a poster and say Bunnings, 20% sale off this weekend and people would be aware of that and that's awesome. That's great. Sounds good, yeah. Yeah, sounds great. But what if I told you, right, that John went to Bunnings, right, and got 20% off and he's renovating his house. So he's buying a lot of things from Bunnings, right? I'm talking thousands and thousands. He's got 20% off, right? Now, because he's gone to Bunnings and had that massive saving, he gets to take the whole family to Fiji for a week with the savings. Fuck, must be one hell of a reno. Yeah, I know. That's what I mean. <laughs> right. Yeah, I see what you're saying there. I Do can, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. That story around what that sale's giving the person and his family and the emotion that's happy, it's sunny yeah. in Fiji, not raining like it is here today again in Auckland. There's a shock. <laughs> but do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And then, and then, even better, we know that John is 45, lives in Remuera, because let's be honest, he's buying a lot from Budding, so he's got to live somewhere like that, in Auckland. So I know we're going to find lots of other lookalike Johns who live in Remuera and we're going to show them that video. See, goes back to my favorite word, connection. Connection. I resonate with Resonance. him. I resonate with John. Inspiration. I'm in, the same, I'm in the same position as John. I really want to take the kids to Fiji, but I've also doing this house reno, you know, finally got some jib in the country after 10 years. So <laughs> Whoa, let's man. make the most of it. Hey, we're not knocking any builders out there. No, but I'm just saying. So that's what I mean, right? Okay, it, that's why storytelling is so important because it allows us to, you know, to connect and, and resonate with people. Okay, well, I guess that's why it's important mm. and we've outlined the connection. What are some of the elements of good storytelling? Mm. What makes a good story? I think um, quite simply, again, going back to having a beginning and an end. <laughs> no. <laughs> going back to having a beginning and an end, I, I studied English literature at uni, right? Yes, um, Tash, we know you're well-versed. Oh, shut up. <laughs> um, <laughs> but the point is, is that A, it's, it has to have a beginning, middle and end, right? And you need you need a hook. Okay, so you need to understand the problem. So what's the problem at the beginning, right? How do we get through that problem? And yep. then what's the end result? Okay, so it needs to have, um, it needs to flow. The other thing with a good story is that in business terms, is as it needs to resonate, okay? It needs to appeal to your to your audience 100%. So, so really and truly, before you start working, okay, what's our story? It's going, who? what's the purpose of this video? 
who's our target audience, what is the message that we're trying to communicate, and then how do we wrap that into a story. Mm. Um, so they are all the things that I would be working through first before I even get into that kind of that story element. Yeah, I think that's a big part of um, when it comes to video creation in general for businesses is taking a look at who your target audience is. What are their problems? Like, what are you actually solving yeah. for them in a real-life situation? 100%. And then find the one that can resonate connect <laughs> but also map it out right like this is what i tell you know people all the time i say okay map out your customer don't just say oh they want to buy this or they want to buy that who they are need, they, they what are they jib. doing they need jib for the house <laughs> where are they what are they doing on the weekends what are they cooking what are they you know what what is their what does their week look like talk to me about what monday to sunday looks like for your for your audience okay for your customer audience and then let's the, let's create a story that resonates with them yeah, um, I wonder how many small businesses have actually done that and mapped it out. I mean, everyone should be mapping out your audience. I mean, that's that's how you you should start, right? And I'm not yeah. saying that like you can have you you just need one audience. You you might have multiple audiences, right? Okay, when I mean audiences, multiple different demographics and multiple different personalities and thoughts and feelings and values. Yeah. Um, but it's identifying, you know, for purpose of video, going okay, this you know. Looking at our business and being like, right, we're doing really well in the over forties, but you know that that period between twenty five to forty, we really need to gain some sales there. Okay, cool. Let's do a marketing campaign that pushes, you know, that resonates with these um, twenty five to forty year olds. What does that look like? And, um, I, and I, so start with your start with your customer. Uh, yeah. You are allowed to talk. Okay, cool. What I was going to say is then, what I guess, what's the solution if you've got a business who sells? Toilet paper, mm. Purex, mm-hmm. small business in New Zealand. Um, and they don't have a big budget to create videos that can resonate with different audiences. How do you go about, I guess, resonating and connecting to a broad audience? Is it possible? Do you just try and find the most like, simple message? Yeah, I think, um, for example, like with toilet paper, like we all use toilet paper for the same thing, you know? Guilty. Sorry, just having a drink. Oh. I'm on mute. <laughs> you great God. Like we all use toilet paper for the same thing, okay? Everyone wants it to be nice and soft. So there are things that you can find out about your product and Ooh, then and then appeal to that, culture. you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Whipple, squeeze this. Anyone that knows anything about advertising would have probably read those books. That was about bloody toilet paper. What right? was it? What was, what? Hey, Whipple, squeeze this was an advert. Oh. Hey, Whipple, yeah. squeeze this. Yeah. Back in like, I think it was the 60s. It could have been the 50s. It was definitely when like TV had just come out. Um, that was about toilet paper. Really? Yeah. So there are ways that you can you can connect with people. It's understanding what is their issue. I think that's what's really important is going, okay, what is their issue? What is the problem that we are solving for them, right? And then wrapping a story around it. And yeah, being I've true to yourself and being true to your brand and your offering, you know, it's not just about going, okay, this is going to appeal to them, so let's do it. It's about going back and going, right, who are we? What do we stand for? How do we solve your problem? And how are we going to show that we do that for you? Yeah, guaranteed. I think what I was going to say earlier is that I think there's, you know, there's four elements of a story. Just to let you know, your screensaver is now the cat. Pause. Yeah, exactly. I th- what I was going to touch on earlier is I think there's four elements to creating a good story. In, in my opinion, you know, you need a character. So who is that person yep. who has who has the problem? So that's the second one is your problem. The third one is an action. What action needs to be taken? And the fourth one is the solution. Um, obviously, when it comes to toilet paper, I probably don't need to map that out for you, but you can you can fill in the blanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A hundred percent. You know, there's some basic principles of, of storytelling, which are, you know, easy to follow. Like it's, it's not, and you don't have to overcomplicate it. This is what I say to clients all the time. I'm like, let's not, let's not yeah, overcomplicate it. Make it simple. It. Make it simple. Make it simple. Make yep. it like, you know, let's make it memorable and, and easy to understand and simple. Keep, they used to have a rule when I was um, a journalist and it's, people use it all the time, but it's kiss, right? Keep it simple, stupid. This is a PG podcast. <laughs> Keep it simple, stupid. When you were writing anything, right? Like I'd, we used to would write for broadcast. Keep it simple, stupid. Mm. So I try and do that all the time. Yeah. When, when, when we're scripting, you know, like a, a large part of what we do is scripting, which is actually really interesting because when it comes to storytelling, I, I actually much prefer to ask questions if I can because I think that's always how you kind of get the best result. But sometimes... Sometimes the way the video is or the the objective of the video needs to be slightly more scripted. I always keep it simple. 
don't let's not use these big long lengthy words that's what i was going to touch on that the clients they 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 know their terminology like inside and out the vocabulary they use in the industry and they always want to chuck in the the big words yeah um like adjudication there you go there's a good one yeah some lawyer chat uh I don't know. I don't know what that means. I mean, you can't do it. Is it like an, a, coming to an agreement? Yeah. Just say that, Just man. say that we're coming to, yeah, to come to an agreement. I know. Agreeable result. Adjudication. I don't know. Yeah. It's about, it's about going, okay, keep it really, really simple. Um, I know it's, I know it's like when you're scripting and you're like, oh, I could use these big, gorgeous, illustrious words. And it's like, yeah, look, that's great if you're writing a really nice, beautiful piece of literature, right? Or you're writing, I don't know, maybe even like a blog copy, potentially. But when you're just trying to communicate a message in a clear way, let's keep it simple. Tell right? you one thing, you don't see Nike using the words like adjudication. No. Nike, um, FYI, Nike. 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 If you've seen Nike. the recent uh, Netflix thing, then you know that Just Do It was coined, a phrase coined by a man who was just about to be executed yeah. on death row. So Yeah, I know. Very. See, Oof, there we go. Grim, but there yeah. you go. The, the best storytellers in the world... Telling their own story, see? Very interesting. Mm. The other thing about storytelling is that, like, we, it's how we gain, gain pleasure, right? Like, think about it. Like, you get into bed and you read a book and it's just so engrossed in the story. I like where this is going. <laughs> <laughs> Filthy mind. <laughs> Filthy. Um, we get into bed, we read a novel. You know, it's all about that story. You're engrossed. I I've know seen what the it's books like. you, you chicks have been reading these days. These uh, these all soft you soft core. Been, you chicks erotica. have been reading. Yeah. Oh. oh, guys can read them as well. I guess if they want. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway, <laughs> my point being is that we watch movies. Right? Story. We're hooked on the story. Your favourite movies. You're like, oh, the story was so good or the plot was really great. Same with the book. You're like, oh, the plot was awesome. There was these twists and turns and I didn't see what was what was coming. You know, we it's how we, um, in our spare time, it's often what we enjoy doing is consuming stories. Yeah. Yeah. That story arc is it's quite important to that. That's, I think, a whole other podcast. Yeah, uh, the story arc. Story arc... Uh, Good place to look at story arcs would be something like Black Mirror. Check those out on Netflix yeah. where you yeah. start off chill, big drama happens, resolution at the end, yeah. happy days. Yeah, if you follow that pattern, you can't go you can't go that wrong. No, you, you know? can't. Um, well, I'm just drinking too much water over here. Might need to go to the toilet soon. Have you got anything else to touch on storytelling? I think we'll do a podcast later on about sort of how to find your story. Yeah, I think so. You know, I trying to identify yeah. what the message is and – how you can resonate with your audience but it does go back on knowing who your audience are what are their problems and how do they live their life and knowing how you and and being really clear on your brand and who you are and 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 what you do you know so it's twofold it's 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 being really clear on your audience but it's also really understanding who you are and it takes a lot of work to do that for a brand to kind Mm. of really get clear on where they are and where they're going and and what the message, you know, they want to be communicating and all those kind of things. So um, there's lots that, there's lots that goes into storytelling, but um, it's very powerful. I think there's no way that you can say it isn't, you know, like it's very powerful. Um, You can do a lot with it. You can educate, you can inspire, you can create emotion. You can, you know, people can learn from it. Like it's just people can connect the possibilities um, are endless with storytelling um, and it's yeah something I'm very passionate about. Well, that was a fantastic episode. Another Tasha McDonald knowledge bomb for everyone to get their heads around. Hope you learned something. Mm. We'll be back with another episode real soon. See ya. Everybody get your roll on. I know shorty and she doesn't want no slow song. Had a man last year, life gone.